Welcome everybody to this presentation that talks about why your API platform needs to be open. It's a presentation where I want to talk a little bit about API platforms, what their value is, and how you can establish and grow them over time. So what is a platform? When we look at the traditional model of how businesses work, we do realize that nowadays this model sometimes is a little bit compromised. And the reason is that organizations need to become better at changing, in particular nowadays. The environment is changing all the time, the customers want different things. So it's important to really figure out what is it, what is the value that I produce and how can I get that value delivered to customers, to users in the best possible way. And the best possible way of doing that, that's what I firmly believe, is to build up a platform to make sure it has all the bits and pieces in it that you can work with it in an effective way and to also make sure that you can evolve this platform. And there's two steps to this. And these are the two steps that we want to look at in this presentation. One is what I call the short game, meaning that you're establishing a platform and you're trying to make sure that everybody is kind of on board with Yes, we will use APIs. That's the way how we design and deliver capabilities within the organization. And we will all build this API platform together and we will all use it. And that means that it becomes a very good foundation. What the long game is all about is then to also say that we understand that, particularly in today's climate, things probably will not stay the same for a very long time. So we also have to make sure that this platform will always be able to help us with changing. The platform itself will change. And that is something that is very important to keep in mind because that is different from how some more traditional models look like. When you look at the traditional model of how things are being designed oftentimes, it's really what you can call a linear business model, meaning that you start with some things that you have, you produce something, so you add something into the mix, you take basic ingredients, you add something into the mix, you add additional services, specific delivery channels, whatever it is that creates value, and then you deliver those as products to consumers. And these products, of course, can be services as well, Whenever I say product, I just mean a capability, something that has value to a consumer. It doesn't have to be a physical product. In a linear business model, you do this in a very straightforward way. And because you do that, you can focus on making that one value chain work, work well, work efficiently, and that's fine. But this model becomes compromised when you now have to change more often and you have to adapt to changing environments because you were not forced to plan for change. And that is the big challenge lots of organizations have ahead of them nowadays that they need to change faster and they need to become better at changing. And that is really what platforms are all about. What do I mean by a platform? Let's look at a definition. What a platform is, it really is not just a technical thing. Mostly a platform is something where you think of, this is where I facilitate value exchanges between customers and myself, but also between customers. Typical example there, for example, is Facebook. Right? Facebook is a platform because it brings together advertisers and Facebook users. So that turns it into a very valuable platform because you can monetize those advertisements. Now, not everybody maybe has this kind of same model of doing advertisements, but the idea there really is to make sure that you look at the platform as a way of how can I improve and change over time my business model that depends on all these different parties interacting. And it's really important to always keep in mind that a platform is not a technical thing when you look at it this way, but that it really is a mindset. It's a way of looking at your business as a way where value gets exchanged, where value transfers take place, 
And those value transfers take place on your platform. So that's the platform definition that I'm working with here. So it's much more than just looking at technology, and that's important. But it's also important to not think that, well, only because I have a platform, a lot of organizations nowadays say, well, yeah, we're building a platform. But then when you ask them, what exactly do you mean by this? What's your business model for your platform? Sometimes I think they are a little fuzzy on the details. And sometimes I think this idea of building a platform or using APIs carries along this misconception of, by just doing that, you'll be fine. And I think that is not true. I think it still is important that you think about why you do it, what exactly you're doing with it, what your goals are, what the most effective ways are to reach your goal, how you measure progress towards your goal. And only if you're able to do that, you can really make sure that your investments in a platform, in an API initiative, actually are valuable. And that is what you want them to be. You don't just want to do APIs because everybody's doing APIs. You want to do APIs because you think that this will give you some advantage over a different approach. So I think it's really important here to understand that when you look at a platform from this point of view, don't just think technology. Think business, think about the organizational things that you want to realize and making sure that you align, and that is the most critical and hard thing here, that you align technology and business so that when there are business ideas around what if we do this kind of thing? What if we take these partners on board? What if we offer these services to customers? That these ideas can be quickly and effectively realized because your technology platform actually plays well in that space. And you're not getting into this pattern that we used to see and we still see fair often where maybe the business side has some ideas and then the technology side says, yeah, that's nice, but for those reasons, it's really hard to do. And yeah, we'll get back to you in a year or so when we have modernized everything so that this can actually work. It's a tough job to create this alignment, but it's something that you see a lot of organizations doing nowadays. And it's something that, that I believe is really a necessary step if you want to make your organization more fit to react to change and to change. And the way how you do that is to really strategically and with a business mindset, think about what do we do that provides values to consumers? What is the user experience that we provide? How can we help to improve this experience? But also who can we take on board, be it partners or other users, so that they help us to serve our customers, our users better. This idea of co-creation, where more and more organizations are realizing the better I become at playing with these different building blocks and being able to allow others to contribute to my platform so that they can get something out of it and I can get something out of it, the better you become at having this mindset and exploring opportunities and connecting the pieces together so that you can actually take advantage of these coming, uh, opportunities. The better you are at that, the better you will be able to adapt to changing environments and you will be able to make your organization more successful. And it's really important to be very clear about this. One thing we see a fair bit is that there is kind of a paralysis because the business side and the technology side, they are still fairly separate, in particular in, let's say, a little bit larger and a little bit more traditional organizations. They are not aligned as well and as aggressively as in some of the more modern organizations. And it's important to really try to change that organizational pattern. Because only when you talk about the same goals, when you align your goals of building a platform, when you have a, same, a shared notion of what a platform even is, only then can you make sure that you will build a platform that creates value, that sustains value, that can change over time to changing market conditions 
And only then can you get to this place where you can say, our platform really helps us a lot to improve our organization. And that is really where you want to be. So let's look at the first step of how to grow a platform. When you look at how to grow a platform, very often in organizations, the first thing is to just make sure that everything that the organization does is actually visible, accessible, usable, and findable in that platform. And that can be a big step. It's something that in some shape or form you might summarize under the label API first, where you would say, whatever it is that we do, the first thing that we do when we think about this capability is how do we make it accessible as an API? Because only when we make it accessible as an API, then we can use it building new experiences, building new value chains. We can use it as a component to play around with different ideas of what we're doing. And as long as we have not exposed the capability as an API, it kind of doesn't really exist in the platform. It may be something that we do, but we do it in kind of a pocket and it's not something that we can easily scale, reuse, build a different channel about it and so forth. So it's really important to try to think about how can I build more things into my platform. The second thing is also to think about whenever you start building new experiences, also make those available as APIs. So that, for example, even though some team may build, let's say, an iPhone application, you still have to think about how do I engineer and design this application so that when another team wants to build an Android application or they want to build it into an Alexa skill, then you can think about how do I now do this? Do I have to re-implement everything? Or is there an easy way for me to use the logic that they implemented and I can pull that into a new experience that I'm building, but that is based on that experience that the initial team was actually designing and building. If you have that mindset, you become much better at being able to build experiences that have a long lasting impact. And the third thing that's also important when it comes to growing is to say you also want to be able to, and we can look at the picture here, like this third component coming in there, you also want to be able to build APIs to allow others to co-create value. So others can come in and can contribute to your platform and you have good ideas around how you make that possible, how you turn that into a valuable exercise, both for the others and for yourself. And again, right, the typical example here would be those others, for example, could be advertisers, Facebook's example, right, where you say the good thing about them, for them is that they are able to reach potential customers the good thing for me is I can make that connection and I can charge for making that connection so I get something out of it as well. So that's the overall picture here. So that's the short game of growing the platform to a point where everything that you do as an organization is actually realized and accessible as an API. And then the next step is evolving the platform. And that really comes to this idea of recognizing your business is a platform. It's a place where things happen, where you take basic ingredients, you put them together in new ways. You may also take external ingredients and then you put all these things together to deliver value to, to consumers and you have figured out a business model, a way how you can make that work, just economically speaking. That's important, of course. And Having this mindset is really important and it's something also where the business side and the technology side can come together very well because then it's this shared idea of how can we more easily interface with others or build new experiences to improve what we're doing. And in order to do that, your platform now not just has to be comprehensive after you, you were growing it, it also has to start evolving over time because now you're, maybe you look for new consumers or for new channels to get to consumers. Or maybe you look for new ways how you can create value and surface it into your platform. 
or maybe you're also looking at new groups that you can bring in that will produce value for you. So there are these different ways of how you can now evolve your platform, but really evolve your business, evolve your business model. Like how can we better serve customers, for example, by taking in external contributors that will help us to, to do things that we didn't do before. So this is really also an important part here to make sure that after you aligned technology and business sides as well as possible, you now also get into this continuous cycle of looking at how things go, thinking about possible improvements, and then actually realizing those things, testing them, all these things that hopefully then you are good at doing because you have focused on making it easier for you to build new things and to change things. And in order to do that, I think it's really important to always keep in mind that try not to platform yourself, so to speak, into one corner. So when you build your platform, always try to make sure that you build it around things that where you make a decision now, it's not something that is really, really hard to reverse at some point. So for example, when you pick a certain API style and you say, for now we're doing HTTP APIs, you might say, well, who knows what we'll do in a year or two. Maybe we'll go to a more event-based styles. Probably we wanna have a mix of those two. How hard would it be for us to change that? And that I think in particular when you're in architecture is always a really important thing to consider. How hard would it be for me to reverse this decision or to say, okay, we're also doing something else now. I call that the rule of two, saying that for everything that you do, you should be able to do it in at least two different ways. And by thinking about it that way, I think you have a better way of avoiding this effect of designing yourself into a particular unpleasant corner that it, it's hard to get out of. So in conclusion, what have we looked at? We have looked at platforms and how they work or how platforms can help you to open things up and then evolve them over time. I think it's really important for organizations to think about platforms as much as they can, in particular the platform as the business model, not just as the technical thing, to make sure that your platform really represents everything you can do as a business. I think that is really important. And to also make sure that you have a open platform that allows you to evolve over time where you can put in different components, you can build new things, and it's all of these things are natural for you. It's not something where you have designed yourself into a particular corner and things become really hard for you. And with this, I am done. Thank you very much. If you're interested in the slides, you can find them at the URI here. If you're interested in looking at more information, you can find me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and on YouTube. So I hope you like this and I'll see you around. Bye.